Yes, cash was negative right. one and a half, two percent real rates, terrible. Now cash is relatively attractive. Ray Dalio is a billionaire and one of the most highly respected investors in the world. He has been investing for 50 years, meaning he knows a thing or two when it comes to investing. In a recent interview, he talked about a shift in the stock market and economy that you need to know about. This shift fundamentally changes the investing landscape. In this video, we're going to answer three questions. What exactly Ray Dalio is seeing? Why the shift in the stock market and economy is occurring? And finally, how you can make sure you don't miss out on this opportunity. But first, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it's my goal to make you a better investor by studying the world's greatest investors. Now let's listen to what Ray Dalio had to say. So help us try to understand what's happened. We always talk about the, the economic machine. We've got the Federal Reserve as part of that machine of sorts, at least trying to assess what that machine's going to do. You saw what uh, Jay Powell said yesterday. I think we're all trying to make sense of, of where we really are. Okay, well, I mean, these things happen over and over again. We're now in the 12th and a half cycle. You know, these cycles, you know how the cycles work. You're 12 and a half cycles since 1945. 1945 was the new world order, you know, new monetary system. Uh -huh. And you know what happens. <clears throat> so let me take you through it quickly. <clears throat> you provide, you get a funky economy, weakness, and so on. So what we had, of course, in 2020 with the combination of COVID, and then also the move from the right to the left. There was a distribution of wealth. And so how did you do that? The government had to send out a bunch of checks. Yep. And the Federal Reserve, where did the government get the money from? The Federal Reserve lent it. So we have an imbalance. And of course, that put a lot of money in the system. You've got the demand. You've got the cycle, classic cycle, right? Stimulation, credit becomes debt. Then you have inflation. Then you have a tightness of monetary policy. And so where are we? So we now in a classic spot where we've got uh, a relatively high real interest rate. Real interest rates went from minus 175 basis points to plus right. 175 basis points, right? You've got a cash rate that's relatively high. Cash used to be trashy. Cash is pretty attractive now. You've got an inverted yield. Say that again. You said trash is now more attractive? Cash, cash is cash. Cash is trash, is what you used to say. Yes, cash was tra negative right. one, one and a half, two percent real rates, terrible. Now cash is relatively attractive. Right. So it's attractive in relation to bonds. It's actually attractive in relation to stocks. You have the classic movement, of course, as rates go up and money becomes tight, you lose the parts of the economy, the parts of the market that are the bubble parts that needed the cash flow, right? right. So you're seeing it reflected in um, not only, uh, you know, long duration stocks, those that didn't have cash. You, so you see the tech stocks come down, all of that come down. You see private equity, you see venture capital because they needed cash. All of that comes down. Uh, and then, so you're seeing a very, 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 very classic that we've seen these things for 12, and, halfway through a 12 or a 13th cycle, right? But what's also happening in that cycle as, since 1945 is that we then have the accumulation of a lot of debt and money. Okay, so we deal with things like the debt ceiling. Does right. the debt ceiling matter? Does it matter how much debt we have? And then you have a situation where there used to be a free market supply demand, but now you've got the Federal Reserve who is now taking it, buying it on the balance sheet, so it's not the supply demand. So you've got that dynamic very, very classically growing. I don't think people are paying enough attention to the big cycle. There are these short-term cycles. Since World War II, they've averaged about seven, six or seven years, plus or minus about three years. That's what we're in a classic one of those. But we keep building up the debt. The last 30 years of investing has been defined by extremely low interest rates. However, things have started to change drastically in recent months. The U.S. Federal Reserve has increased interest rates at the fastest rate ever. As of the making of this video, the U.S. federal funds rate, a proxy for interest rates in the economy, sits at 4.6%, which is the highest interest rates have been in over 15 years and likely have even higher to go. In order to find a period of time when interest rates were significantly higher, you would have to go all the way back to the late 1980s. For the better part of the last 15 years, not only were interest rates low, 
They were literally 0%. This shift from 0% interest rates up to a more normalized rate environment may not seem like a huge deal to the average person, but this change fundamentally alters the investing landscape. Let me explain. For the first time in nearly a generation, investors can actually generate a return from cash and what is referred to as cash alternatives, like short-term U.S. Treasury bonds. Speaking of short-term treasuries, that is a great segue to the sponsor of today's video, Public. Right now, you can earn a 4.9% yield on your cash when you purchase government-backed treasury bills, which is a higher yield than a typical high-yield savings account. And unlike a traditional savings or high-yield savings account, the yield you get with treasury bills is a fixed rate, so you always know the rate you'll get when you purchase. The problem is that buying U.S. treasuries is super complicated, or at least it was. You used to have to go to a bank or navigate a government website that looks like it was designed in 1996. Public is an investment platform that allows you to invest in stocks, ETFs, crypto, art, collectibles, and more, all in one place. And now, Public has launched Treasury Accounts, a shiny new way for you to access the 4.9% yield of U.S. Treasuries with the flexibility of a bank account. When you buy treasuries on public, your treasury bills are held securely in custody at the Bank of New York Mellon, the world's largest custodian bank and security services company, so you can trust they're in safekeeping. Sign up for public using my link in the description and start getting a 4.9% yield on your cash, which again is way more than a run-of-the-mill savings account and even higher than a high-yield savings account. Plus, you'll even get a free slice of stock worth up to $300 as a welcome bonus when you fund your account today. Now let's get back to the video. Higher interest rates fundamentally change the way investors can approach investing. I'm going to demonstrate what I mean by using a teacher's pension fund as an example. This fund pools money together on behalf of retirees and then is managed by a fund manager to generate revenue. Let's say this fund needs to achieve an annual return of 7% in order to meet its obligations to the retired teachers. Things like sending monthly checks to the retirees to help cover living expenses in retirement. This 7% return target is also needed to ensure the pension fund doesn't run out of money and so that the pension fund can increase its benefits in line with cost of living increases. The investment manager of this pension fund can spread out the fund's money over several types of assets. These various assets each possess varying degrees of risk and expected returns. There is cash, bonds, stocks, and then what is referred to as alternative assets with the main categories being real estate, private equity, and venture capital. On one end of the spectrum, you have cash. Cash has the least amount of risk, but also has the lowest expected return. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have alternative investments. These are considered to be the most risky, but at the same time carry with them the highest expected returns. The job of the investment manager is to achieve that 7% return target while taking the least amount of risk possible. If the fund manager was deciding how much to invest in each category during the year 2021 when interest rates were 0%, his options may have looked something like this. Expect a return on cash, 0%. Expect a return on bonds, 2%. Expect a return on stocks, 8%. Expect a return on alternative assets, 12%. If the fund manager would have just split the pension fund's money among the four categories evenly, so 25% in each, the combined return would only be 5.5%, short of that 7% target. Naturally, the fund manager wants to make sure to hit that 7% return target for two main reasons. The first being that he doesn't want to get fired and lose his job, but the second being that he doesn't want to be the guy that caused the pension fund to fail to meet its obligations to the retirees. Given the low interest rate environment, the fund manager is forced to do what is referred to as going out on the risk curve. This means that in order to hit the required return, he is forced to take money out of the safer investments and move it to the riskier investments. In this example, that means taking down how much cash is in the portfolio from 25% down to just 5%. That money is then put into more risky assets, stocks, and alternatives. Now stocks make up 40% of the portfolio and alternatives make up 30%. The good news is now that we can see that the pension fund is meeting its return target of 7%. However, now 70% of the pension fund's assets are invested in stocks and alternatives as opposed to just 50% previously. This makes the pension fund vulnerable if there were to be a protracted downturn in the stock market and economy. Let's see how higher interest rates change things. 
Instead of cash producing a 0% return, let's bump that up to 4%. And instead of bonds generating a 2% return, let's say that increases to 7%. We'll keep the expected returns for stocks and alternatives the same. As a quick side note, when Dalio says that cash is more attractive now than before relative to other assets, this is what he means. The difference between what you can expect to earn on your cash compared to the stock market has shrinked as interest rates have increased. If the pension manager splits the pension fund evenly across all four categories, the portfolio is now generating a return of 7.8%. This increase is due to the higher returns from cash and bonds. That 7.8% return is nicely above the fund's 7% target. Instead of having to put more money in riskier investments to meet the return requirement, because of higher interest rates, the fund manager can actually do the opposite. He can take down the stocks and alternatives to just 15% of the portfolio each. He can bump up bonds to 40% and have cash at 30% of the portfolio. Notice now that 70% of the portfolio is in the generally less risky categories of bonds and cash. Even with the much larger weighting of cash and bonds, the portfolio is still hitting its 7% return requirement. While I used a pension fund in this example, everything we just talked about applies to your own personal investing portfolio. For the first time in nearly a generation, having cash and bonds in your portfolio isn't causing you to lose money after factoring in inflation. As an investor, you always need to be thinking about your returns in what is referred to as real terms. Back in 2021, the interest rate on my high yield savings account was a whopping 0.4%. I feel like calling it a high yield savings account with that low of an interest rate should have been illegal. Assuming even a normalized inflation rate of 2%, I was essentially losing money by keeping money in this account. Here's what I mean. I was earning a return of 0.4%. In order to calculate my real return, I need to factor in the impact of inflation. A shorthand way of doing this is to simply subtract out the inflation rate from whatever your return is. If we assume a 2% inflation rate, that means my real return was negative 1.6%. Making matters even worse, the inflation rate wasn't 2% during this time period, it was 5, 6, even 7%, making my real return even more negative. This is why Ray Dalio is proclaiming that cash is trash. By holding on to large amounts of cash, you essentially were getting penalized as inflation far exceeded the minimal return that you could generate. However, the recent rise in interest rates has changed things. Now you can earn 4 to 5% by holding cash or cash-like assets, such as short-term U.S. Treasury bonds. If we go back to our real return equation and bump up our return to 5% and keep inflation at 2%, we can see our real return is now 3%. Assuming inflation will return to more normal levels, this is the first time in the investing lives of many of the people watching this video that the real return from holding cash is actually positive. This is a complete paradigm shift from the last 15 years. Personal finance influencers and YouTubers were saying that if you had more than just a few months worth of living expenses sitting in cash in your account, you were an idiot. Inflation was eating away at your purchasing power. That excess cash needed to be invested in the stock market and real estate as quickly as possible. That logic may have been sound at the time. However, the argument can be made now that it makes sense to hold cash and wait for a great investing opportunity. Returns on cash are at the highest in 15 years, and stock prices and real estate values are still at or near all-time highs. Heck, even Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of all time, is sitting on over $100 billion of cash currently. As billionaire investor Charlie Munger says, when the world changes, you must change. Well, higher interest rates are quite a big change for the investing world and the economy. Make sure you change accordingly. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because it's my goal to make you a better investor by studying the world's greatest investors. Talk to you again soon.